Today's video, we're going along with this chart, this graph from the American Journal of Kidney Disease, January 2023 issue, titled Risk and Benefits of Different Dietary Patterns in CKD and Chronic Kidney Disease. I did a video about this back then, just talking about the diets, but now I got more information from this study, and I think this, this chart is really nice to go along with. This chart is designed for medical doctors, nephrologists who want to incorporate some nutrition and lifestyle into their practice with their patients in conjunction with you know the meds, the pharmaceuticals they do. So let's just get into this because this follows the most up-to-date guidelines. You come into their practice regardless of whatever kidney disease you have. First off, they want to start recommending or to start looking at and thinking about changing to a low protein plant dominant diet. That's the first thing. Plants, plant proteins, are just easier, better for your kidney. They don't make as met much metabolic toxins as opposed to animal proteins. And they want you to lower the protein if you can in your diet. So that's a general recommendation because that's the most up-to-date that's gonna help you the most. I've seen with, worked with, consulted now with over 50,000 people. And I've seen the before and after blood work always tends to always do the best for people. Second, they talk about medications here, pharmacotherapy, RESI inhibitors. It's a type of blood pressure medication. SGLT2 inhibitors. This is like the Farsiga. So, you know, you got to get on some good medications because you want to slow that proteinuria down. You want to try and eliminate it if you can and really control as much as you can. So I'm not getting too much into the meds. That's why you should have a good nephrologist and preferably you consult with a couple of them. So lifestyle advice, they're going to tell you to exercise more because exercise helps everything with kidney disease. Stop smoking if you're smoking, moderate alcohol intake, cut it back, try not to have a lot. Moderate means like one to two drinks a week or less. Okay, that's what moderate means. Weight loss, general weight loss for anybody who's overweight, losing weight, a significant amount always helps the kidney. Okay, so here they got target comorbidity. So you have high blood pressure, hypertension. And what do they want you to do? They want you to have a low salt diet. Now, anybody with kidney disease should have a low salt diet. But if you have hypertension, you should even have a lower salt diet. Then they tell you high in potassium. You should eat some food, healthy foods that are higher in potassium. Now, why would they tell people with kidney problems to eat potassium? Because we know now, okay, more definitive more than ever before the research is clear that you don't need to restrict potassium unless it's a problem if you're cutting out a lot of good foods that that are healthy for you we just say eat more fruits and vegetables you don't have to focus on the potassium just eat more fruits and vegetables talk about other medications there diuretics again exercise weight loss smoking cessation okay if you have cardiovascular disease from whatever it is calcification of the arteries high cholesterol they want you to still follow a plant-based healthy diet okay they always want the plant-based diet because it's better for you lots of fruits vegetables plant proteins okay beans soy products okay lentils this is what we're looking at again exercise smoking cessation diabetes okay very large percentage up to 50% of people with diabetes end up on kidney failure. 50% is from diabetes. So what do we want to do here? Plant-based healthy diet. Okay. Control your diet as much as you can to help the blood sugar, restrict the junk, weight loss, exercise, SGL2 inhibitors, a glucose type medication, which everybody knows it as Ozempic. Okay. You can use those to help with weight loss. Okay. So whatever, whatever you need to do to help get all the medications. Okay. Cause you want to Stop that proteinuria. All right, next, target CKD complications. Talk about metabolic acidosis. Eat more fruits and vegetables, alkali fruits and vegetables, sodium bicarbonate. We talk about sodium bicarbonate, metabolic acidosis, and so many other videos. You know, reference those if you're looking exactly what to do there. And you always should because these numbers are changing now when it comes to acid buildup in kidney disease. Hyperphosphatemia, high phosphorus, okay? Avoid phosphate additives. They do add phosphorus additives to a lot of things. Tricalcium phosphate, okay? Different types of phosphorus are, are added a lot. So you, you may wanna be mindful of that if you have high phosphorus, but if you switch to a plant-based diet, that automatically helps your phosphorus level because you don't absorb the phosphorus from these plant-based foods. Low in processed foods, just uh, in general in your diet, low bioavailable phosphates, okay, that'd be like animal proteins or more of those phosphate additives. All right, then we get into uh, phosphate binders. They have a couple prescriptions. You can also use natural ones, okay? Niacin, niacinamide is an excellent uh, phosphate blocker, okay, that you can use. We talk about it also in other videos. Take a look at that. And then hyperkalemia, high potassium. What do you do? Avoid potassium additives, okay? It's like potassium sorbate, lactate. A lot of these are added into junk foods, packaged foods. So if you're eating clean, whole foods, you don't have to worry too much. Avoid juices, dried fruits. So in terms of diet, they're just recommending those. Now also what we know is if your CO2, if you're acidotic, that metabolic acidosis, if that's not corrected, that's gonna make your potassium higher. You correct that, your potassium also helps come down. So avoid the juices, 
avoid uh, sauces, dried fruits, increase fiber intake, more fruits and vegetables because more fiber. It helps you get rid of potassium easier. And then in potassium exchange resins, that's medication. I covered a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a big chart here. It was a lot to go over. You know, hopefully this helps you rewatch this video, but this is, you know, really good guidelines up to date. It helps you really see what is up to date in the research. Now the weight loss portion, one thing I forgot to cover, weight loss, okay, in diabetes, weight loss in general. You'll see a lot of people said, hey, I went on an Atkins or now a, a keto type diet. When I started 20 years ago, it was Atkins and my blood sugar got better my kidneys got better and i'm eating like a lot of meat a lot of animal products so like you know what happened there well, like that goes against the uh the research so when it comes to weight loss it comes to blood sugar if you lose a significant amount of weight 30 40 50 pounds it almost doesn't matter how you lose the weight but as long as you lose it you will regain kidney function because you lost a significant uh portion of your body weight and so you're cutting drastically down on the work kidney has to do. If you've lost 250 pounds and you lost 50 pounds, you lost 20% of your body weight. It's 20% less work your kidney has to do. So yeah, it's good to improve. So weight loss is super important. Okay. You want to do it with a plant-based lifestyle, but almost um, any way is, is, is going to help your kidneys if it's significant, if you have a lot of weight to lose. Thanks for watching everybody. A little longer video today. So rewatch it. All right, and we got, make sure to subscribe, got hundreds of other videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.